We're here at the MVP Summit, and I'm now talking to Tiago Costas. Is that right? Yeah, that's oh, right. It's, it's the Englified version of the it's, pronunciation of the English. Yeah, it's kind of the Englified version <laughs> of it. Okay. <laughs> but close enough. Um, and Tiago is an Azure MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer, which is kind of cool. And because of that, we're going to talk about certifications. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, go. <laughs> <laughs> so, no questions? I'll just go? Okay. No, I can ask a question. Like... We know that there's now new Azure role-based certifications, mm -hmm. whereas before it was basically a number and you were like MCPD or whatever they were called, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So why why the change to role-based? Like, what's your opinion on that? Okay, so Microsoft did, uh, did the change because the certifications that we had in the past, they were basically based on the service and on the product. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, and with the market, and also with other cloud uh, uh, let's just say services that are there with three letters that starts in A and ends in W S. Uh, they were already having uh, the role-based certifications, gotcha. yep. and it's to be totally honest, it's not something new for Microsoft. Microsoft already did that uh, like six, seven years ago. They already had some role-based certifications, uh -huh. so they really wanted to bring that back because it really makes all the sense. Because look, my job is what I'm an Azure administrator. So okay, there you go. You have a certification uh, that is match. Um, the OD, so the object domain, matches the needs that you have and the, the things that you do on your daily job. Yep. Uh, and not like in the past that if you wanted to be Azure certified, so you had mainly three big exams, mm -hmm. uh, an administration, um, another one for dev, and another one for architect. And wow. let's imagine that you're not a dev, and you needed to take the dev course, the dev exam. Yes. That was, let's just face it, a little bit hard for people yeah. that come from the administration world, they will really, really struggle to pass on that exam. And some of them even quit doing the certification because of that. So now, with role-based certifications, it really does all the sense. Um, and for example, they even started to have an Azure Fundamentals certification, which is a great starting point, for example, especially for persons that you never touch on Azure, okay? Oh, yeah. look, that's a great starting for you. Or even, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, I was training some people that are the salespersons of a big, big international uh, consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And th their sales managers, so they, they call it business managers over there, yeah. they went to class one day and they just took that, that, that knowledge and now they are taking the exam. It's, 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 it's a, not that they're going to work with Azure, for sure they are not, but they need to know a little bit so that they can talk with their partners and their customers. So it's a great starting point for everyone, to be honest. And then, of course, after that, well, that depends. If you're an administration, hey, you go for the Azure Admin, uh, which is uh, basically two exams, and you just take the two exams and you get, and you get your certifications. Mm -hmm. And then you also have another one, which is for Azure developers. Mm -hmm. okay? If you're like on, on the dev space and you work with Azure or you want to start with work with Azure, that's your certification. Yep. It's just one exam. It's the AZ203. And uh, if you pass on that exam, you get and the same level as the, um, so as the administration. It's just the associate uh, on the associate level. Mm -hmm. But, of course, uh, there are Azure professionals that have other roles. And, for example, uh, when I do consulting, I'm, today I'm more on the role of architecting solutions and designing solutions for my customers. Yep. And then over there, of course, Microsoft also thought about that role. And what they have is that they have... Uh, an Azure Architect, so it's a Solutions Architect uh, certification, which is two exams. Um, one exam is a technical exam, so it's, you really need to know Azure. Like you really need to know Azure. Okay, yeah, you really need to know, because the object domain is huge on that exam. Um, and then you have another uh, another exam. Uh, so th that one is the AZ300. Then you have the design exam, which is the 301. Yep. Uh, the 301 is more on the design level. So first exam really ends on doing stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then the other one is more on the design. So they're going to make questions for you like, oh, do you design this? What is the best yeah, solution yeah. for this? So that, that, that is the kind of things that you need to know for, uh, for that. And uh, when you would... Basically, when you pass on the two exams, so you get you get the Azure certification for Azure Architect, which is, uh, let's just say, a very very high end. Because yeah, yeah. uh, you mentioned there were levels. There's three levels, is that right? Yeah, so, so yeah, there, we have three levels. So we have the fundamental levels, mm -hmm. the fundamentals, which is just the one exam is the AZ 900. Then you get the Azure fundamentals. Then you have the associate level, where you can have the Azure administration and the Azure developer certifications. Yep. 
And then you have basically the expert level. Mm -hmm. And on the expert level, currently you have two, which is the Archer Architect, and we even have another certification, which is uh, one of the latest that just went in GA, uh, I think was like two weeks ago uh, on the recording of this, and basically we're talking about is the Azure DevOps certification. And um, it's just one exam too, but there is a catch, okay, on the Azure DevOps certification, is that you need to have a previous Azure certification, which can, can only be the associate developer or the associate administrator, one or the other. You don't, you don't need to have both, okay? Yeah, because sometimes the diagrams that we have from Microsoft, let's face it, they're not the most clear Okay, and, and the person in Microsoft that designed that will kill me if, you, if she saw this recording, but yeah, that's true. No, yeah, that's true, and then sometimes, yeah, some people found it that they need to have both, but that's, yeah, yeah. Not, that's not the case, okay? Yeah. Cool. Now, so at a Cloud Guru, obviously we do certification training, that's kind of what you know, we do, as well as all the other courses for all the other things on Azure and everything else. Um, do you want to share just a few exam tips, maybe? Like, what are some of the ways that you can maybe learn this material a little bit better? Okay, so I even go a little bit okay. behind even. It's like, what can you do for, for achieving a uh, successful exam? I always tell everyone, on the night before, don't study for the exam. Really have a good night <laughs> rest. Because yeah. I, I see a lot of people stressing out yeah. and then trying to cram, you know, all the way Smart. through on the last night. And then they are so exhausted that on the exam, their brain is just not working at 100%. No. And the uh, Azure exams, they are not easy exams, okay? So you really need to have all your brain up to speed and up, up there so that you can have a good, a good exam. And of course, other, other general tips, it's like docs.microsoft.com. Look, they are awesome resource. They're not training, but you can see the product documentation there. Microsoft always have there some, uh, some, other, some other tips, et cetera, that you, can, that you can find over there. And for me, the best that you can have is just fire up the portal, fire up an Azure CLI, or a Bash window, PowerShell, yep. just choose whatever you want. I know there's a great fight between the PowerShell guys and the, and the Bash <laughs> ones. Hey, look, I, I work with both. I don't, I don't choose size it, sides <laughs> over there. But just start and just really do stuff and, and really gain experience with the services because I know that if you work with Azure, you don't work with all the services. No. It's, it's, it's really hard for you to do that. But of course you can do what? The other ones that you're not so used to. Hey, just create some use cases, just try something, just create a lab on, uh, on Azure. And, okay. and yeah, look, for me that's, that's like the best advice I think that we, can, that we can give to someone. Fantastic, thank you so much. Thanks Tiago for taking your time. Okay, Cheers. Yeah. Thank you, always a pleasure. <laughs>